Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Faraz Bukhari. I'm an MPhil in physiology, serving in Lahore at the moment as an associate professor. Um, the purpose of this uh, video is to address some of the misconceptions that I found in one, some of my colleagues um, and probably a bit of lack of awareness of what has happened to basic sciences and the degree of basic sciences uh, under the current uh, BMC Act 2020. In this regard, I'll be uh, uh, sharing some of some published official documents acquired from the PMC website, um, duly underlined uh, on this on this particular issue, so that uh, people at least know what has happened, um, and that will, inshallah, hopefully enable us to address it in a meaningful uh, manner. So I'll just uh, share with you now. Uh, this first is this document and as you can see I've just marked this this is a September 24th 2020 document it has been gazetted uh, by the federal government uh, it is uh, called the PMC Act so <clears throat> uh, in this this act shall be called the Pakistan Medical Commission Act 2020 this is the document and when you go to page 16 of this document, you see under standards of medical and dental education, you can see these two paragraphs, which read, the standard and structure of faculty shall be regulated as prescribed by either the AGC or the university to which a college is affiliated or any other law applicable to a public teaching institution subject to the minimum standards determined by the board. The board here refers to the board of PMC. So uh, basically what they have done is they have switched uh, the accreditation of, of uh, degrees and the structure of the faculty. By standards, I mean what kind of degree would a faculty need to hold to get to a particular designation and the structure, i.e. the minimum number of faculty that is required to run a program. Uh, they have now uh, uh, transferred this uh, entire thing to the Higher Education Commission or the university with which the medical college is affiliated with. Okay. Uh, point number six reads, any violation by a medical college or dental college shall be actionable by the accrediting university in accordance with regulations as may be prescribed by the Higher Education Commission. So the entire accreditation and standard and number of faculty uh, requirement for any medical institution in this country now falls under Higher, Edu uh, Higher Education Commission, which is clearly a, a, a walk away from what PMDC used to do. PMDC, as, as we all know, used to be a, and we have to say used to, used to be a accreditation and licensing uh, body. Uh, so this was this from this uh, particular PMC Act. And now I would like your, uh, your attention to a certain document which has been uploaded on PMC website again. These are, this is the first council meeting of PMC, as you can see, it was held on Friday, October 2nd, 2020. And in this, uh, literally on the first page, they clearly say what they are. PMC is principally a licensing regulator for the medical profession. Um, and uh, when, when you say that you're a primary, primarily a licensing regulator, that means that anything which is to do with uh, the clinical side of things, and in specific, the licensing uh, side of things, uh, you are uh, only uh, uh, linked to that. So this is page number 14 on the set document, as you can see. Agenda item number 30 was discussed that day. Clarification on teaching experience not to be registered or certified by PMC and non-MBBS persons may be included as faculty in specific basic science non-clinical disciplines. A discussion uh, took place, which you can read here. Uh, it, it basically argues that there is uh, no issue in inducting non-medical faculty in basic disciplines and that this happens uh, abroad all the time. 
uh, which by the way is correct. Uh, it does happen abroad. And then a decision uh, is written here, uh, which basically says you can read the whole thing in your own time, but I, I, I've uh, highlighted these two lines here, notice to be issued, clarifying that non-MBS faculty can teach at medical colleges. Number two, verification of teaching experience shall not be issued as certificate by PMC. It's rather the responsibility of each teaching institute. It is, however, ironic to note uh, this particular sentence that they write, any existing non-MBBS faculty shall not be terminated or discriminated against um, on the basis until the academic board issues the necessary standards. Um, who is to save the MBBS faculty uh, from being terminated and discriminated against? Uh, they should have wrote something about that as well. So this is the last document that I'll be referring to in this video. Uh, this was a follow-up meeting uh, of the first meeting that I mentioned. This was held on October 16th, 2020. Um, and we hop on to the, on to page three of this said document. It has some interesting bits here. Uh, agenda item number three, issuance of uh, experience certificate. Uh, it says under the PMC Act 2020, the educational regulations of institutions is to be undertaken by the HEC and the university. Faculty hiring and their promotion is the subject and domain of the employer institution. Okay, this uh, is uh, again a departure from the uh, previous practices, significant departure in which uh, the employer institutions have been enabled. Uh, how this will be in on ground uh, is of course to be seen. And the decision linked to this is PMC has no direct involvement in setting the promotion criteria for faculty. However, this is this this here is interesting. Minimum academic standards of faculty will be developed by the academic board, which is part of PMC, which would be now the, the word here is required, which would be required to be taken as a minimum benchmark by the employing institutions and universities when undertaking their promotions of faculty. Okay, this this I'll come back to in a bit. HEC as the principal academic regulator. Okay. So they have, again, as I mentioned earlier, they have given all the academic side to HEC, will be will set the criteria based on the guideline standards laid down by the academic board, again, mentioned here, and also ensure implementation at institution level. So HEC will be running around implementing um, academics in medical institutions. Uh, PMC shall, for the immediate period, uh, provide to the HEC the faculty promotion criteria in vogue. Uh, that is what PMDC used to do. This is what this means prior to the establishment of PMC with a request to adopt the same for the interim period. Now, this interim period, I am tempted to highlight again. Uh, could this be the interim period that uh, uh, that uh, the basic science people uh, these days are talking about? That there should be a there should be a period. There should be a, a relaxation during which this uh, needs to be implemented and. This is something that I talk about in the conclusion of this uh, uh, video as well. Uh, but this, uh, uh, this I don't know, this is up to how you interpret this. Uh, so it goes, let me just read this again. We have the request to adopt the same for the interim period to assist faculty and institutions in terms of faculty promotion. So clearly it, is, it does mention an interim period. How HEC will and what HEC will draw from this, again, is, uh, remains to be seen. And let me, as I said, go back to this point required. So they say minimum standards. Now, minimum benchmark, uh, if this uh, is connected with uh, what I mentioned uh, earlier, which is the point about non-medics, then minimum benchmark may say that for any given basic uh, subjects, medics and non-medics both can apply. And the minimum criteria is a certain number of uh, years of education, which is typical, typically language of HEC, okay? 16 years of education or 18 years of education. Uh, they don't define education. Uh, of course, the broad definition is that in sciences, you need to have uh, 16 years of education of science and in arts, you need to have uh, how many years of whatever prerequisite years of education in arts and so on and so forth. Uh, but I, I don't think uh, anybody should uh, 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 draw any sort of solace 
in uh, BMC holding on to a minimum benchmark of qualifications, which they, they say is required uh, by HEC to stick to. Uh, this can be a very loose benchmark and they actually have mentioned in, in their earlier meeting, which I mentioned earlier, uh, that non-medics will be part of this whole scheme of things. This is basically uh, documentary evidence of what has happened uh, since uh, 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 the last uh, part of last year, over a couple of months. Uh, it was communicated officially uh, to all the stakeholders, I, I, I assume, uh, but I feel that there is a lag uh, in our community, the basic science uh, faculty. Uh, so I felt the need to uh, make this short video. Um, finally, whatever uh, uh, will happen from BMC or uh, inshallah, hopefully the stakeholders, uh, uh, which, in, which has to include uh, people from the basic sciences as representatives. Um, I would just in my humble personal capacity, just mention this, uh, that whenever there's a policy change by a government, uh, which is their prerogative, of course, governments uh, change uh, uh, all sorts of uh, policies and, and rules and regulations, and that's fine. And there's a due process, of course, which they follow. Uh, however, um, there, is a, there is a sense that uh, most of the stakeholders, especially the faculty, was probably not taken on board uh, while making this act. I maybe am wrong, maybe there were representatives, uh, which I personally am as an individual not uh, aware of, uh, who may have taken, uh, uh, were taken into confidence or were, were consulted. Secondly, uh, time frame. The way things are implemented in UK and US, uh, two countries which we are uh, usually referred to, uh, to emulate our practices and all, all sorts of uh, SOPs. Uh, they, whenever they, they make a small change in policy, again, the word is policy. Policy means set of rules which will affect a certain sector of an industry or an entire sector on an entire industry. So policy is a very serious matter and governments usually take a lot of, um, they do a lot of homework. Uh, they they, they take, take a lot of stock uh, of how this will happen, i.e. the process uh, of its implementation. First, the decisions are made, then the even the, the way it is implemented, this uh, also needs a lot of deliberation. When you talk about education, when you talk about medical education, uh, 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 countries which which uh, we are of, uh, often quoted uh, to to look towards and to follow, they take special care in changing policies um, uh, in a phased, uh, iterated manner. So it's not uh, it's not sudden. Okay. So for example, uh, something that which personally uh, worries me is uh, my MPhil students, the current MPhil students, what, are, what, what will happen to them? Um, the ones who have uh, recently graduated, the fresh MPhils, what, what, what are they to do? Uh, the established ones even, uh, who are at the cusp of their promotions, uh, what will happen to them? So when, you, when, when there is a sudden change in policy, Again, this I'm saying based on my own humble understanding of how this whole process has, uh, has developed. But if it had evolved uh, through a phased, uh, uh, phased way with, with several iterations, uh, then uh, probably the nervousness and the frustration and outright fear of basic medical faculty uh, uh, would not be there, okay? so. At the end, I guess uh, a, a solution to this uh, should be found, inshallah, and it will be found. Uh, and that solution will have to be a certain timeline, uh, a certain phased approach during which things will gradually change. And people who have, um, again, these three categories that I mentioned, the ones who are at the cusp of their promotions, the ones who have just graduated, and especially the ones who are still in the process of acquiring this degree, which has suddenly uh, stopped showing up uh, at, at the PMC website. And they now I hear that they are not, uh, 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 when you go for a re-registration of your medical license, they are not including basic degrees. 
th this is this is in my opinion quite sudden and it, it should be phased uh, it, it it needs to be spread out over a timeline and maybe uh, around five or plus years um, should be given to the sector to adjust itself the dynamics of it need to be stabilized uh, imagine the number of medical schools uh, where these basic people, basic faculty, including myself, uh, we teach. Um, we are not single people. We, we belong to certain families. Uh, so any sudden fluctuation in policy uh, can have very drastic effects, not just on the education itself, but also on personal lives uh, and, and, and families. Uh, so with that, I would conclude uh, this short video, which was primary, primarily uh, had two intentions. Uh, one was to prime uh, my fellow uh, brothers and sisters in this field that things have changed and they are going to change. And number two intention was if this video finds itself with somebody uh, who is a someone uh, uh, in policy making, then then maybe a perspective uh, from us uh, need, uh, uh, should be read and should should be should be considered. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.